So here we got the right hand one. Uh, try the same. Soaked it overnight, so hopefully it comes loose. Apparently this one does not move. Because this one wasn't out. The other one, this is an original Volvo here, the other one is not. The other one is an aftermarket one, which has been replaced at some point, I don't know why. I said that before, I think. Um, well, we just keep on trying. Soak it a bit more, hammer it a little bit, and then eventually it may come out. So let's compress the springs in the meantime. Hopefully the travel is enough. I'm not entirely sure, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, it's, uh, if you oil your spring compressors before, it does help a little bit. So, let's give that a try. So, once the spring is free, you just, that's a 19 millimeter, and it just needs an Allen key in the middle. There are special tools out there, but yeah, so make sure the spring is loose. Um, be careful if this is not properly seated, it's going to jump on you and it really hurts badly. You can see it's already bending the studs of the spring compressor. Uh, yeah, just stay a, bit, a little bit clear of it in case it goes jumping. Anyway, let me take that out and then you can take the whole thing out and uh, fit it to a new one. Well, you can certainly say these shocks are pretty worn. Look, I just push it in and there's not much going on here. I think, yeah, and that's exactly how it feels when I was driving. You can see there's a considerable amount of wear on, on them as well. So, we gotta fit some new ones. First we need to clean that spring because it looks really dirty. Uh, eventually, it's a little of paint here eventually. Yeah, because if springs are rusty, they may break, so you want to clean them. And interestingly, if it's not under load, it doesn't squeak but we have them it's just what it is it's just a bearing and obviously there is a bit of play in it so this needs to come off and go on the other one there is the, the bump stop inside so that all needs to go back and then before you reassemble them make sure you got the right one there handed this is the right hand one because the these looks are on the other side on the other side on, on the other damper and when you put them in you're gonna put them all the way down to reach this lock here if you don't uh, your whole geometry is miles out. Uh, the problem with most of these cassettes actually are this one here. Um, with most of these cars including the Focus um, they suffer from negative camber at the front um, because suspension bushings are wearing and uh, same at the rear. You can see that sometimes they, they really have negative camber and I noticed that on mine and <coughs> The reason is that one ball joint at the bottom, which gives you about three millimeters of play, which doesn't really help. But there is no way to just camber at all. Um, so if you mount it, make sure you the top strut mounts, you push them out as far as you can. Uh, and eventually, if it's really bad, you can actually enlarge the holes a little bit to make it better. It's just modern cars and money saving. It's just a pain in the neck. Well, that's what it is. Okay, before you take this, the, the clamp off here, make sure 
<laughs> you know what you're doing because it's uh, coming out. All right, um, let's clean the spring, see how it looks like, and the uh, worst case, we give it a bit of a, a paint. And then we reassemble the whole thing. Wait until the spring is dry because we just painted it. Give it a bit of paint here, so at least it doesn't rust that badly anymore. All right, let's see if you can get that one apart in the meantime. Soak some more at WB40. Maybe we get it apart. Let me try that. I know what the back. Oh, we got a little busted out. It was quite hard work actually. Uh, obviously a long breaker bar on the impact helped at the end board looks good it was just rusted at the end so clean that grease that put it back so now I use the chisel and split that and uh, pull it out so here we get it out it's quite easy actually uh, make sure you clean the bore really good the problem is, if the bore isn't clean, you may introduce some camber which you don't want. Um, because it's not sitting straight, it's probably sitting on an angle or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to get the brake shield off to give that a bit of a paint. But I'm not entirely sure if I get it off. The bolts are really rusty. And they're very small bolts. Alright, let's give that a try. Well, there is always one which doesn't move. Uh, move that around a little bit. Uh, it's M5, so we just go through and drill it out because it's completely rounded. It doesn't move. So let's drill that out. I need two hands for that, so obviously not much to show. At least it's designed to dr be drilled out easily, so we through. Just rip the bolt off and use a tap and then you're good to go. Well, I've been misled by the 8mm head. It's actually an M6 bolt because the 5mm, normally 5mm, 5mm bolt is 8mm head. But no, Volvo does 6mm bolts with 8mm heads. I just chased them with a the tap but I need to draw that further that's the reason why I couldn't get the head off all right let me try that again so we finally throw here and uh, I'm gonna fit some m6 bolts with 10 millimeter heads because I may have some hits it's common in the auto industry um, to use smaller heads for whatever reason um, no idea why they do that against standard conventions anyway uh, we give that a clean probably a lick of paint clean that surface here check what thread that is it might be a standard one chase it make sure everything is good and uh, yeah, paint that one here because this is really rotten. Well, surprise, surprise, looks like a standard M12 thread. Just tied a nut and uh, so we're gonna chase that with M12. Uh, we'll also do the, the bolt, bolt looks good. Um, just clean it. I think this is a high tensile one. So I don't have any of those, otherwise I would fit a new one. Yeah, let's chase that right. And uh, it's a lot of there's a lot of shit in the hole. That's the reason why it was binding. So we need to clean the hole out, make sure we got enough clamping force, and then chase up the thread. And we're good. That will be the next step. So if you reassemble the bump stop. Just pull it out. It's really just 
it's just sitting in this little locks here and uh, yeah, this is binding everywhere and this doesn't sound much better but anyway then put the spring on the right way need to make sure the spring sits flush on that corner and then just put the, the top this is curved as well so that needs to go in the right place as well and uh, then everything should be fine so let me do that i need to answer that uh, looks looks about right to me okay so fit the nut always use a new one it comes with it uh, it's a nylock or something like that so just fit it get it tight and then release the, the tension and everything is honky dory if you clamp it do it on the on the mount here so you're not gonna damage the strut itself okay a uh, simple job just get it get it nut tight first and then pull it down okay that little look must be in line with this one here with the mounting um, so that means we're about here ish because that's where you can see the marking here I think it's right a bit odd but that's what it looks like if you look down here that makes sense have it like that all right it's a bit tricky but if uh, if I look the the markings I didn't pay attention actually because normally they just straight but that's how it looks like that's where the end of the spring was and that's where the end of my spring is okay let's put it together let's put it together this way so here we have it all back together uh, fit it to the knuckle and uh, wait until the rain stops when you refit it make sure you actually bang it in until you actually hit the stop here there's a piece of plate welded on it and it's going to be all the way in to the stop and then just tighten the nut i need to check the tightening torque i just used the impact for now but uh, we need to torque that to spec um, okay so this one is done let's do the other one same problem here, the spring has some rust. So the problem is you can't really clean the springs very well because the spring compressor is in the way. But um, it worked okay for this one. So yeah, and when you refit the tops, make sure you um, you grease the bolts a little bit because there's water coming from the bottom and uh, they were pretty hard to get out actually. So, all right. So we've done all the shocks, this is the right hand one, this is the left hand one, um, still waiting for the drive shaft, he may arrive at some point, we've got new brakes, new pads and uh, we're also going to fit new lower control arms once we have the stuff apart, um, yeah that's going to come next.